They couldn't even hear me. My bad. Uh, how, hello, welcome. Adventures of Lala Gang. Uh, we're back to playing Others Game tonight. Uh, and uh, yeah, I hit the button at the wrong time. Uh, but yeah, we're playing. And some uh, some of us are playing with a little bit more commitment than others. So I just want everyone to just give Jeremy a little round of applause, a little golf clap. Look at him. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. He knows what Joe he did. Clap, damn it. <laughs> okay. All right. So I mean, I, basically, in the hierarchy, like Jeremy's up here. That's what I'm saying. And then. <clears throat> There's the rest of you, and that's that. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna get to the other escape tonight. We're gonna uh, jump back into into the A B, and we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see what's up because uh, I didn't even mean to do that. We're gonna jump back into the A B and see what's up. Look at me. I should be on like Sports Center or something. I don't know. I feel pretty good. Uh, okay. So what we got going on tonight? Uh, I got nothing to talk about. So let's just jump right in. Uh, last time around, uh, you all have recently taken on a gig from a well-known and powerful fixer within Arizona Bay by the name of La Loba. Uh, she uh, she has given you a task to head out into the into the bay itself, down into a place called Sunken California. These these habs like uh, Bioshock like underneath the water. Uh, and you're supposed to head down there and speak with uh, a person by the name of Nostalgia Jack, who represents the uh, the old school Hollywood collective. They have apparently been having some trouble uh, with a group of uh, of Makara cult worshippers by the name of the Siltbound Authority. Uh, you all got onto uh, you hired a a junk boat captain by the name of Grimy, uh, and uh, you headed out into the water. Unfortunately, you were attacked uh, by the Siltbound Authority, who were encrusted with all sorts of uh, scales and uh, and coral, and they had like they definitely looked like reptilian in some in some in some cases, uh, and they were also riding uh, <laughs> these giant summon crocodiles uh, like they were boats, uh, and they bit your boat and they capsized your boat. You all got plunged into the water. Uh, Verana, however, was able to briefly summon the skeletal carcass of a sea monster, which animated and righted the boat. Uh, and then tried to drag you back down, but Agaricus was there uh, to help pull you back up. Uh, everyone, once the dust sort of settled with some with some shooting, with some firing, and all that kind of stuff, the silt bound were either dead, uh, the crocodiles were desummoned, uh, or there was others that kind of fell off into the water way back. Grimy had taken a really bad wound, and his voice and his vox implant had malfunctioned, so his uh, his Irish accent was gone. Uh, you healed them as best as you could, and then you essentially limped forward in the junk boat to one of these buoys that the Hollywood Collective has out there. You took the elevator down. You got into the Sunken California Hab, but when the doors opened on the lift, you saw bright skies and clean streets of the golden age of Hollywood, and then the AUG projections from Maya Corp started to flicker, periodically revealing what those overlays were hiding, which was a bunch of damaged uh, and toxic and corrupted infrastructure Pedestrians greeted you, uh, but they seemed to not be real people, just NPCs on some sort of pre-programmed loop that were malfunctioning as well. Grimy dying in your arms. You guys looked around for a way to go, and that's essentially where we left off. So you all are on a sort of distorted-looking cityscape. Uh, you can see in most cases it's a very beautiful-looking Los Angeles-ish Kind of uh, kind of day in the 1940s or so, Studebakers and various Cadillacs and things are either parked or passing by in loops on the street. Occasionally, those flickers start to happen. Uh, there is a a faint odor, a muskiness down here, uh, and there are all sorts of shops and uh, and, and restaurant fronts and things like that, and occasional pedestrians and others. Uh, so you have in your hands, uh, grimy. You know who you need to talk to. You know that they are specifically can be found at some place called the Orpheum or the Orpheum Theater. I'm just going to task ask you all who who do you think takes the lead in finding out how to get there or how to find Nostalgia Jack, or do you prioritize getting medical attention for Grimy? Uh, what do we think we do first? I mean, we probably help this person that helped us, right? We're so were some of his wounds because of the the funk from the water? Yeah, he. If you were uh, so basically, when you came up from the water uh, after being below and helping out Verana, mm -hmm. and you righted the ship, you saw that he was face down in the water. So he was in the toxic water for a while. You don't quite know how long, and it likely he ingested some. 
which is mm-hmm. possibly the reason why his throat and his Vox uh, implant has uh, has suffered some significant damage. You can tell he's struggling to breathe, and it likely has something to do with his neck, his throat uh, being damaged. So he looks up. What? Mm. <laughs> is essentially what happens. Got a really terrible idea. What? <laughs> So, What's your terrible idea? I'm ready. So one, I did put together that like the toxic floral patch sort of thing. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Story story uh, tag. Yeah. Normally we would apply that to him, but it's hard to do on the inside. So clearly the thing to do is to like do the emergency tracheotomy and then shove the floral patch into the throat. Okay. Uh, you are welcome to try. I, I think you had stabilized him once already. You yeah, are welcome yeah. to try well, to to do it again to see if you can make any further progress if you like. Oh, okay. Then that, if we need to get him to the actual med station to do anything, that that sounds unnecessarily I, silly. I can't remember if you did the tracheotomy or not up on the surface, but I know that someone did tend to him. Oh, that's ever, right. That's right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little brain dead right now. That's okay. That's I, I thought we did am. because that's when we noticed his voice box was. It that's out. right. Yeah. That's right. We changed. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there's the, there's no perceivable threats right now that you can see. Like you definitely can tell that there's some nastiness underneath these emitters that are flickering. You can see there's a few screens here and there, these old fashioned marquees that are like showing different movies that are playing in various locations. You can see traffic passing, pedestrian traffic passing. You can see people shopping in various boutique stores. Uh, It is daytime. You can see a sun that's a little pixelated on the edges. You can see palm trees in the distance. You can see the Hollywood sign uh, and the far, far distance. All of this is stuff that you can see. But every so often it flickers and it either the 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 overlay itself seems to be blurred or pixelated or so it seems to just drop it entirely. And then you can see like the grossness of what you're standing on or what these buildings really are. Uh, And then you can also notice that some things are on a loop. So really, it's just about how do you want to go about trying to find your way to Jack or how do you want to try to go about finding your way to medical attention? Have any of the loops like reacted to us? Do they seem to be like, can they track us at all? Do they say different things? You definitely had more than one encounter uh, when we when you first got here with a man and a woman walking down the street. Uh, But when they engaged with you, they did so in a way that was kind of like generic. They were just like, oh, hello there. What a fine day we're having. What wonderful weather. What's the good word there, chap? Hey, good sport. And that kind of stuff. Okay. And then, like, they just flickered on. Are there any visible medical facilities on this, like, main street kind of thing? There are not. No, you don't see any hospitals or anything like that on the street. Is there, like, a map anywhere? Like, uh, there uh, is you are a here. kiosk. Yeah. While, while there, he's looking for a kiosk or a person in kiosk, then Brick is going to go up to one of the NPCs and ask for... Where's the closest medical facility? Okay. So Rika is going to go chat with an NPC. Clover, there is a malfunctioning hollow board right near the exit from the lift. Uh, and you can see that it, when it cycles through, it shows like Casablanca, like this big old, uh, this, b- this big old like movie poster for it that kind of flickers in and out. Gone with the Wind, Maltese Falcon, like none of the, the dates make sense. Sunset Boulevard and King Kong, it kind of cycles through those. And then it's like now playing at like the Orpheum Theater, right? So it does have that. So what you could try to do if you wanted Clover is you try could try to put together a pool to like get this thing to stop malfunctioning and see if you can get more directed location towards the Orpheum Theater where this thing is playing. Sure. Um, I have my tags. I've got analytical brain augment i think that's really the only one that would contribute okay sure we can do that uh i think that's perfectly fine it's really anything that might be like mechanical or programming hacking that sort of thing like anything that has to involve those kinds of concepts but i'll take that too that's yeah fine. i think clover I think... have nothing in 
like the tech side of the mm -hmm. like options. Yeah, I <laughs> no, I have um, I have two of the like the mythos, and then two of the um, whatever it's called, like the self stuff. Yeah, yeah, the self, you, yeah. you're a spiritualist. No noise, no noise for noise. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, you could give it a go. You could also like call over somebody who's more suited to it and ask them to do it if you didn't want to take the take the. There's no like like I said. There's no real major mm -hmm. threats that presenting itself. The only thing that you would worry about, I think, all of you would worry about, is how long it takes because mm -hmm. of Grimy's condition. That's really the only thing. Um, Does it you seem like there's a like um, on the interface here to interact with this kiosk? Does it seem like there's like a microphone or a speaker aspect that would like be able to hear me if I'm saying anything? It's definitely emitting like song, like music underneath it. Like it's it's certainly again it's it's very anachronous. It's not really authentic to the 1940s, but it has that feel. But you can hear kind of like this underlying Ooh. music that will loop in underneath the, each different rotation. Uh, but yeah, you're not you don't see like as if there's anything that communicates with anybody. It doesn't look like a phone, basically. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll work on it, and then as I'm working on it, I might yell at someone to come help me with it. But I'll still do the role, and as I'm working on it, I'm just going to be saying like every buzzword I can think of in case he can hear me. Just like Dio. med bay, doctor, okay. help, assist, medicine. Do, <laughs> do any of you want to lend a tag? Like, uh, lend a tag to him because you can do that. Don't forget, you can like assist each other. And they went and all of my tech stuff is used for breaking tech, not yeah. You yeah, guys I don't have anything are... that. Jeez, pretty people. startlingly lacking in hacking for a cyberpunk <laughs> game like it's it's a major uh it's that's that's probably not a good thing <laughs> uh, it's fine i'm just my plan is to hack via destruction okay mm -hmm. I, I have an I'm idea that. That. like an axe I, I have an idea but i don't know how much it would help you Okay. Because I would okay. love to call upon the honored warrior spirit, like some sort of like, like film noir style, like hard boiled detective. If you're calling on somebody who can shout out the lingo appropriate for the time, <laughs> but if I did that, so I think it would be funny to then stupid. use haunted by past wars, and instead of getting somebody who's useful, like get instead of getting the equivalent of like Dick Tracy, get somebody who's like Marv, just spouting nonsense. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I really past just. Warriors. That sounds hilarious. I really just want someone to hack it to a turbital. Like, like I okay. think that's all we're really after here with this. Mm -hmm. I'll just do the plus one. Okay, go for it. This is when he rolls Eleven. box cars. So, yeah, see, I told you. This is when it just crushes yeah. the roll and everything's fine. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, you, you get into it and you realize, like, you can access, like, by pressing on the screen, because the screen itself is sort of, is, is uh, uh, you can actually press on various spots of like each thing. Like you can put the you know, your finger on like Humphrey Bogart's face, and it'll give you like the IMDb page for Humphrey Bogart stuff like that. Uh, but you realize Ooh. like if you touch in the bottom left hand corner, it brings up this like utility menu, uh, and in doing so, it allows you to get sort of a trace back to the Orpheum Theater, uh, and you can see it'll the screen itself will switch over flickering a bit here and there and it'll show this grid layout of this los angeles neighborhood that you're in which appears doesn't look to be historically accurate but nonetheless it exists mm -hmm. it's a little curvy little grid uh but it does kind of create this this sort of lighting uh like these little dots that light in the direction of the orpheum theater uh and you realize it's just a couple blocks over it doesn't seem to be too far away okay Okay, and then uh, Rika, this is to the theater. Yeah, this is for the Orpheum because that's like, that's what this uh, what these this display was. They were it was basically movie posters for these various movies okay. that are displaying the theater. That's Rika, where we know nostalgia Jack Dickey. Correct. Yeah, uh, you wanted to go talk to some of these people. So, do you pick? people on the road do you pick people in a boutique uh do you pick people in a cafe like is there any uh, uh, any I've, preference i've got grimy in my arms uh so i think it's just uh someone on the streets or whoever is like closest to me 
Okay. And there's like clear kind of panic in her voice and and face. I I need a med bay. I need a med bay now. Oh oh well well look at there. that that lo- that doesn't look too good at all. That well that looks downright terrible. Oh goodness gracious. Uh, what's a med bay? Doctor. Oh, you need a doctor, do you? Oh well, let's see here. Well, you got the hospital over on, and then you got the other hospital over on, and then you got the. Clinic on, and then he got the, 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 and you see, like, as it's trying to, like, think and give you uh, these instructions, it's, like, flickering and falling out. Uh, you can tell there's definitely something wrong with these various loops. Like, this is, like, the, th- the second or the third time you've seen them interact oddly. And then after they go through this series of listing all the hospitals and clinics, they look back to you and they're like, oh, well, geez, that looks terrible. That looks downright terrible. Indeed. Oh, my goodness. What happened to this fella? Oh, dear. You're going to need a doctor, aren't you? And they look at you. Let's try again. What's the closest clinic? What road is the closest clinic on? And they go through that same loop again. But that's when you hear a voice from across the road yeah, you don't want to, uh, you're not going to really get an information out of them. Uh, they're a little glitchy right now. And you look across the way and you can see this kind of thick, heavy set, like muscular woman, uh, with like these, uh, like coveralls on. And you can tell she looks like a tech. Like she looks like somebody, like she's got definitely like maintenance worker written all over. She looks, she's not wearing like a cosplay outfit the way that some of these NPCs, I can't quite isolate exactly what's going on with them. Uh, we don't really have a a hospital. I don't know what happened to your friend there, but uh, you can head over to the Roosevelt. Ask for Dr. X. He can give you a hand. Where's the Roosevelt? Where's the Roosevelt? New arrivals. It's very Two blocks. New. Two blocks south. You're going to see a giant donut sticking up in the sky. The top half will flicker off because the AUG overlays aren't looking looking too well. Make a left, and you'll see it. Big white building. Goes all the way up to the sky. All right, thanks. And uh, Rick will start jogging. <laughs> okay. You're, and so you all see Rika start jogging away. Uh, what do the rest of you do? So, uh, Zavrana and Ivan, and, like, what are you two doing? Are you following Raika? Are you going with Clover? This was not a whispered conversation, so I'm quite happy to say whoever heard to her. Uh, well, I'm just seeing Raika move with conviction. I'm like, she must have found something. Like, I will follow. Okay. All right, so Ivan, you come trucking after Raika, no problem. Yeah. Uh, Verana? Yeah, Verona um, had said we should probably, you know, kind of try to get help and had been sort of watching Clover and Rika be not particularly successful at that. So she had kind of started like she was going to go over towards um, (laughs) towards Grimy and almost like almost giving up like, oh, well, this is really hard. So and she was kind of like, you know, kind of getting a little bit kind of morose. in their kind of general direction of like, well, he did get us here and uh, good on him for getting us here. And I suppose we all, if we find our end, we want to have found our end being in the service of others, I suppose. And then she just sort of sees Rika just like get the information and run and take off. And then she's like, huh, okay. And then she kind of runs after Ivan. Okay. So Rika, Ivan, and Verana so far are heading off in the direction of the Roosevelt. Uh, Agaricus and Clover, the two of you are poking around with this uh, with this kiosk, this overlay thing. Uh, what do the two of you do? Uh, I think I just what? want to make a note of where that theater yeah, was. And then, yeah. That's and then uh, I see them all running off in the other direction. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, that way. That'll yeah. go fall. By you, Agaricus. I'll coil roots around Grimey to kind of keep him in sort of like a stabilized platform and then carry him running after them. Okay. I think Rike is carrying him. So you're just oh, like Rike leaning over top and just bad. like got the roots and such. Like, so that you're just throwing the roots on top to make sure like, or I maybe missed that earlier. I apologize. Maybe you create like some kind of b- uh, baby Bjorn for mm-hmm. uh, make it easier. 
So you're just going to reach out the roots. Okay. <laughs> you follow the instructions of the, uh, the maintenance worker that you briefly spoke with. And eventually you find what looks like a glorious hotel. Uh, not a hospital, but a hotel. Uh, and they were not wrong. It's very white, but, and it goes off 20, I don't know, maybe not 20 stories, but pretty high into the sky. Uh, but whenever the flickers come with the overlay, you see that at least the top half of the building disappears completely uh, as it looks like it's only about half that height and it's and it doesn't look like the upper floors are in good condition. Um, but you notice that there's also these like sludge stains and such on the concrete walls and uh, all that kind of stuff. And it definitely gives you like it gives you the vibe of it's supposed to be a glorious hotel, but every time it flickers away, it doesn't look that great. You also notice that there's like not all there. People seem to be avoiding it in some ways. Uh, and like there's like alleyways where people are kind of going in the side as opposed to going through the front door for some reason. Uh, but you'd nonetheless see these beautiful, amazing cars that are just parked, uh, parked in this, uh, this roundabout right outside the front doors. Uh, but it seems to be a hotel and it seems to be functional as far as you can tell. Do we go inside? What do you think? Uh, I'm running up to the uh, person at the door, uh, was presumably in PC, um, and asking for Dr. So my tree is blanking, but right God. Dr. X. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so you run up, you can see that right in front of the main doors where there's like those that kind of turnstile type doors, uh, there is a very large man that almost looks ape-like uh, in his size. And which, when you come up, he puts his hand up anyway. He's like, uh, who are you looking for? Dark tracks. And she kind of like lifts Grimey up a little to... Do you got an appointment? I didn't have time to make one. You always got to have time to make an appointment. Dr. Okay, X doesn't we'll just see anybody. Get to him. No, I think you got to make one right now. Okay. And okay. Can I, can I make one right? <laughs> well, that depends. What do you got that you can offer? Uh, Lady, he doesn't do this out of the kindness of his heart. He does this because he provides a useful service to the people of Sunken California. Now, Canada if you can... Looks over her shoulder at the rest of them. <laughs> oh, just can't it's... interrupt me like that. Okay. okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give him the tag of being annoyed, uh, which means <laughs> it's going to make whatever you do even more difficult. One of you over here, the money bags. I have something that's quite valuable. Oh, do you now? What's that? I do. Uh, so one of my weakness tags is that I have sought after blood. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Typo negative. So I am it's a weakness going tag, to... though. So, Okay. <laughs> Like something bad could happen because of this. Like, okay. So, so how how does how do you present this? So you've got this guy in front of you blocking your way forward because he yeah. wants some sort of contribution. Yep. So what is it you uh, say as we're on a step forward? Describe it for me. So yes, uh, if uh, Doctor X only does work for payment, uh, that absolutely makes sense. Um, has he considered uh, or would he consider a uh, fair payment for work uh, a donation of um, and I'll say the thick which I'm just making up on the spot as sort of a slang for this sort of sought after blood uh, okay so he See, one of his big, bushy eyebrows just raises up almost underneath, like, this bellhop hat that is much too small for the top part of his head. His eyebrow raises. Uh, how much, uh, how much we talking? Uh, 
uh, and Vrana will just sort of gesture to sort of the condition that Grimy is in. Um, half hour in the chair will do you. Huh. One hour. And no griping. What if I were to sweeten the pot? Uh, to try and keep it at that half hour by proposing I have a one-of-a-kind miracle cure that Mr. X cannot get anywhere else. And I'll produce the toxic floral. I'm capable okay. of making more of this. Mm. Within a limited space, it can uh, undo some of the effects of the local waters. Really? Now that's mm. interesting. All right. Now, I could make more if we were to be friendly. Mm. Final offer. 30 minutes in the chair. As much as he can siphon. And then he's going to take a look at this. And this is good enough. It's only 30 minutes. If it's not good enough, then it's the full hour. No griping. Understood. And she Whoa. looks okay. to yeah. Agaricus with a, a bit of appreciation for trying to keep it at the half hour. And so he like pulls back his arms, hits his panel right behind him, and you see the turnstiles actually start spinning the opposite direction now. Welcome to the Roosevelt. At your disposal. Go on in. Tell Mr. Lorraine you're looking for Doc. He'll uh, He'll sort you out. Do you all go inside? Yeah. Okay. It does not need to be asked twice. <laughs> I like your you head. Hey, thank you. Uh, you go inside and it is very much a kind of art deco kind of vibe here. You got all of these mirrors. You've got this different, these different patterns, like these geometric patterns, like everywhere, all very avant garde in some ways. And it also has like a weird vibe going on because you can see right off the bat, any of you who are familiar with like history or anything like that, or the 20th century or something like that, you can see familiar faces. Like you can see like there's Humphrey Bogart, like literally in the corner, kind of smoking a stogie. And he's talking to like some flickering old, some flickering woman, some beautiful starlet that suddenly her overlay just kind of flickers. And then she looks like some kind of old shriveled woman for a moment before coming back. You see Marilyn Monroe. She seems to be like off in the off by this little this little lounge lobby area. And there's a bunch of people that have uh, that have kind of gathered around her. And she's just sort of telling stories left and right. And you see like all these different familiar celebrity figures uh, here and there. And you hear the sounds of a of a band playing like through these these kind of frosted glass doors. Um, and then you can see there is a sort of a welcome lobby desk. And there is a a figure uh, that is standing behind it that is dressed in a, uh, I mean, it kind of looks like a, like a bellhop uniform. It definitely looks like a hotel, uh, like a hotel uniform from like the 60s maybe or 50s, minus the hat combed over, little bow tie. Uh, and he's got this really thin mustache, like this pencil thin, like Rhett Butler kind of uh, uh, mustache, like right over top of his, uh, right over top of his lip. Uh, and he's kind of eyeing you. Is that something we can help you with? Hello? Uh, yes, we've made that. an appointment. Oh dear, I see. Okay, I suppose you're here to see Mr. Excuse me, doesn't like when I call him Mr. Doctor. Uh, second floor. Room 214. Okay. Thank you. So, rush on over, go onto the elevator, hop on up. You're passing by more and more like starlets. You also see like, uh, you also see like these, these celebrities that are, that are like coming out of some of the rooms and you can see they've got like here, here comes Cary Grant. He's got his coat off and his like shirt is untucked and like you can see a bit of like his hairy chest is coming out. He's, he's still buttoning up the shirt here and there. You like go by and it smells like sex coming out of the window, is, is something coming out of the door. It just and you look inside and you can see this sort of shriveled old you know, men and women inside on the bed and they're like, thank you, Carrie. And then the door closes. <laughs> and then eventually <laughs> you make it to room 214. Uh, and 
when you knock on the door and you and you and like the door opens up, you go inside, everything changes. It's no longer this art deco affair. Everything looks sleek and modern. Um, you can see that there's monitors left and right. Uh, there's all these different like medical devices. Uh, you can see that there are a couple patients that are in various like beds or chairs, something like that. Uh, and you can also see there's like a couple of these medical drones that are moving about and like checking vitals and, and poking things, you know, giving people injections and such. Uh, and at the center of it all, that kind of seems to be orchestrating it. You see a very tall, skeletal slender figure with this unnervingly smooth skin, like really, really smooth skin. And as they're ordering these different, these different bots to go different places, you realize they have no hair. No beard, no eyebrows, no head. It's all just perfectly smooth. Uh, and then he turns to you and he speaks to you with this sort of like syrupy drawl. And he's like, well, now, what seems to be the pertinent problem? What can I do for you? He's dying. Oh, yeah, that, that sums it up. Well... Why don't you go ahead and lay him down on this uh, on this bed right over here? I'll I'll take a gander. Now, which one of you is going to be in the chair? That's me. All right, we're gonna get you get you sorted. A one, come here, please. You see one of these little bots kind of waddles over towards you and reaches up this small little mechanical hand with three fingers, like right up right up next to you, Verona. Do you grab the hand? <laughs> uh, Verona looks to other people to see if anyone's going to go with her or if she's just going to get kind of taken yeah, off to I'll this. Yeah, keep you company. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, so you so grab the hand, take the hand and it leads you yeah. over to this like corner room, like through this other interior and, and Ivan, you can follow. It's fine. And you see, there's like this big dentist chair that's basically set up uh, and they kind of get Verona down into it and they start hooking up all these different like tubes and devices into the side. Uh, and like the bot seems to get everything fixed and Verona, you can feel each ow, ow. It's not gentle uh, in the least. Uh, and like, and like you just hear the like all these little error messages coming from the bot, like zzz, uh, no vein, zzz, uh, no vein, zzz, uh, no vein, zzz, uh, no vein, <laughs> over oh, and over again. Oh for goodness! Oh for goodness' sake! Oh just just right here, just right there, zzz, right there, zzz. right. Yep. Success. And, <sighs> <laughs> and they start draining your blood. Okay, so. Uh, Rika, you lay the body down, you lay Grimy down, and the doc... Well, oh my. What on earth happened to this fella? Sounds like he got thirsty and tried to drink half the bay. Huh. Yeah, it's pretty bad, Dark. You gotta, gotta save him. You gotta save well, him. Well, I don't have to do anything, but if, uh... Since he's here, and since you all have generously donated to the cause, I suppose I can use my talents to perhaps help him just a little bit hmm and you can see as he starts leaning down these little uh like underneath the forehead you can see where his skin just lifts up and these lenses come out from underneath the skin of his forehead and kind of cover him up and you start hearing the zzz, zzz, as if he's zooming in and looking more closely oh, well i'm afraid uh, mr grimey might not be able to talk much after this He'll have to definitely get a new vox emitter. Yes, I met this man before. He's uh, he's delivered a few clients for us. Huh. Well, well, I can, I can, I can assure you, he'll be just fine, just fine. And he, and he kind of grins at you, but he's got those big goggles on his eyes now, and you can't really see his the colors of his eyes anymore, and you can't see his forehead moving. He's like, you can't even read an expression from him, Rika, uh, as he says this to you. Now, you can wait down in the lobby if you like, but uh, I don't imagine he'll be waking anytime soon. Could be a few hours could be a day, but don't worry. He's in good hands. Well, we'll leave you to it. All right. 
life. So, I'll leave this with you. I was told that you were to judge the merit of it. Oh, let me take a look at that. Fancy yourself a chemist? Well, more of a glorified botanist, really. Glorified botanist. Interesting. Which many chemicals are derived from flora and fauna. You, kind of, you can hear like the machinery and his goggles turning and turning. Uh, give me a... So this is pretty good. This is actually your, just your story tag, right? You already, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say no roll. Uh, but we'll say whatever you... Like you don't have it anymore. He's given You've given it over. Yeah, just um, give it up. Take it off the sheet. Okay. And Absolutely. And so that if that's the case. We'll say he'll take it. It's quality. Well, what are you doing here? Person of these kinds of talents... Why are you here? Well, I'm helping somebody at the moment, but you know what? You seem like somebody who helps people as well, and perhaps in the future, I could assist you in other ways. Well, I could use a glorified botanist on staff. There's all manner of interest in growth down here. Some of it natural, some of it, well, not. Huh. You said you're helping someone now. Who is it you're helping? That's an excellent question. <laughs> um, uh, you would know Nostalgia Jack. As a uh, um, uh, the nostalgic man. Um, nostalgic Jim. Jack. N nostalgia Jim. <laughs> oh, is that so? Okay. That's got that you is down the job. here. Well, I guess there's no accounting for taste. You, uh... I don't have right any sense of smell anymore, so that has lost most of my sense of taste. You know, you got a good sense of humor, too. When you're done with all whatever it is you're doing for Jack, living in the past that they are, looking for more work, you come back my way, huh? I'm sure we can get up into some trouble together. Or solve a plenty of it. That too. Sure. All right. So they turn back and they start checking on some of their patients. You can see Grimy's already getting like various intravenous fluids and things. You can see one of the bots is already kind of stitching some stuff together. And you can see their vitals are starting to pop up on some of the uh, on some of the monitors. And basically he's in the hospital at this point being cared for. The whole time, Vrana, uh, go ahead and give yourself the the tag, uh, the status. Um, you said 30 minutes, huh? Okay. Blood uh -huh. drained. Give yourself blood drained two as okay. a status. All right. So you're going to be... Is anyone be... else back here with us? Is it the um, little bot? It's Yeah, it's A1, the bot. Uh, if I'm standing nearby with orange juice and cookies, does it help or any? Do you have orange juice and cookies? Where'd you get those from? <laughs> I'll gladly go steal some. Oh, they don't have any here. Oh, well, so, <laughs> but you could try to go back down to the lobby if you want to try to steal some. No, that's that sounds too dangerous. I'll just wait here. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you don't have any uh, any nourishment, uh, I will be even paler than normal after this uh but perhaps ivan you could uh pass the time a a, a bit uh as uh tell me a tell me a frank you're a prankster tell me a prank you've done make me make this worthwhile yeah, okay, like, I'm not so much the prankster myself, it's more the, the gremlin spirit that follows me around and does it. But one time, totally great prank, um, we, we were at a restaurant that very much specialized in meats wrapped in pastries. So we just changed everything to say Beef Wellington. It was great. Um, except for the corn dogs, because clearly those are kebabs because they're on a stick. It's, I see. That was quite, quite the prank. I can at least imagine the taste of beef 
wrapped in pastry. Yeah, I mean, I we could probably get some for you at Blue Lobster when we're done. I, I, I worry that that might just be a sock wrapped in a napkin, though. Yeah, I think you're right. But thank you for that. That kept me... Oh, 27 more minutes. Okay. You got this. You got this. <laughs> okay. just hooked up to the machine, just passing conversation with Ivan. With Are we Ivan. being monitored by anyone here? Uh, yeah, A1 bot is here, and you would guess, considering the layout of the room, there is more than one security camera in here, more than likely keeping an eye on you. Yeah. Oh, that's that's not a problem. Uh, I want to try and cause a malfunction in the machine that makes it think it's still running hmm. uh, without being noticed. Uh, that way you can fulfill your obligation without actually getting drained entirely. Um, so like, I would like to maybe leverage like maybe my tags for cause malfunction, mm -hmm. uh, maybe evade surveillance, uh, maybe even tech gremlin. Okay. I think all of those could certainly apply. The two that would probably give you, uh, give you negative will probably give you negative uh would be the presence of a1 so you have yeah. you have a, a nursing bot here uh and then you have un you haven't actually detected the security yet we've done nothing to kind of figure out what that that is so there is there is that like there is sort of un undetected security so i would say a minus two to minus two yeah to whatever it, okay. plus whatever it is that you have as, uh as altogether bonuses. then it would be a plus one roll okay I get a 10. Okay. I will say nice. that with that success, Verana, reduce your blood drain to one as opposed to two. Nice. And we'll say that we sometime in the first 15 minutes or so, uh, you're able to distract A1 a little bit. And Ivan, you're able to sort of like spook or goof the system to thinking mm -hmm. that it's still draining when it isn't actually. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so we'll say you kind of get... Yeah, they get they they get half of what they so the the bot thinks they get the full thirty minutes worth of drain, uh, because the bot doesn't physically see the blood, uh, but you've definitely confused the the machinery. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you, Ivan. Uh, this will help with what comes next. Okay, so what does come uh, next? As we are leaving, uh, Rika's gonna make sure, like, as soon as they are out of earshot of Dr. X, will say quietly to Agaricus, you're not really coming back to help him, are you? I mean, this is a small world, you never know, and it's better to make friends. You can be I oh so smart. Zach is a real piece of shit. You'd oh, the think, better for him not to I hate mean, us. You're not coming. You're not really come. Don't come. You're better than that piece of shit. But if I were back here and I could give him something that helps other people, well, then it's a win-win because then he likes us and we've helped people. If he's going to help people, it only because you can drain Vrana blood for like a half hour. Or maybe you have a special need. Your help. I can fulfill, so he doesn't need to drain her. Really? Is that the vibe you got for him? Is that he would stop draining useful blood because he had what he needed? Because that's not the vibe I got. He doesn't seem know. like he wouldn't take it just because he didn't need to take it. He probably doesn't need Varna's blood. I'm going to be honest. I try not to think too hard about these things. I just see a chance to help, and I do it. Okay, Believe me when I say this is probably not help. Hmm. Well, at the least, he doesn't uh, hate let's me. Let's go see Nostalgia Jack. And to use Chuck's words, maybe we'll bump into my future ex wife on the way. <laughs> okay. So you leave the clinic then? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just want to. 
say this out loud so everyone is aware. You're going to leave Grimy there after not fulfilling the deal for all of the blood and for talking shit about Doc X while he has surveillance devices with his own clinic. So just want to remind all that for <laughs> later. So you guys leave the clinic. You head down to the hotel. Uh, and you see, again, the same images you've seen the whole time around. And then you go out into the streets. Uh, Clover, you know the way to the Orpheum. Uh, do you mm-hmm. lead the way to the Orpheum? Yeah, I'll, I'll start heading that way and bring everyone along. Okay. Is everyone following? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So eventually you find your way uh, through the various cityscapes and such until you kind of go down the Boulevard Stars. And then eventually you see this neon sign Orpheum. Uh, and the exterior of it, you can tell that just like everywhere else, the Augs are set, certainly struggling and you can see like a lot of like the cracked water stained walls of the wor- real world. But whenever they are sturdy, uh, you can see these colorful glass doors. You can see all these movie posters. They're very retro in presentation, but you can also tell when you get close, they're very, they're also animated. So it looks like somebody has taken like these old still, uh, movies, uh, movie posters and like animated them in some particular way. You can see allies on the side of the theater and like, but they only show when the AUG falters. Otherwise, it just looks like it just looks like continuance, like a, a bigger or, or a bigger size theater itself. Um, inside, you notice that the lobby itself is sort of draped in shadows. You can see the marble floors are kind of gleaming under the soft light above you uh, as like these these old fashioned chandeliers. You can see these almost incandescent like bulbs are are kind of glowing here and there and pulsing every now and then. Um, you can get this sort of floral scent uh, on your nose. You can see a handful of people that are like in line to sort of buy a ticket, it looks like, and then others that seem to be in line to some kind of concierge concession sort of de- uh, sort of desk. And that seems to be the only thing that you see in terms of an employee as there's like a flickering, well-dressed hologram. Uh, that seems to be serving people various goods. You see these big bouts of popcorn or buckets of popcorn and drinks and stuff being slid over to other patrons who are very well dressed. Uh, and you can see there's all these different like velvet curtains that are little rippling, uh, rippling here and there. And like these, uh, these, these, what looks like old fashioned like men's and women's bathrooms on like either side of this big lobby. Um, what would you like to do? You said there's like a, like a reception kind of person. Yeah, there's like a concierge. Like, do you see like an employee of the theater kind of flickering in and out, like a hologram? It looks like behind the concessions. It's a fairly sharply dressed looking one, silver hair, that kind of thing. I'll walk over to that one and kind of like wave at their face, and then see if they are able to track me, or if they're just like um, on a loop. Well, no, you see them actively turning around and grabbing stuff and handing it over. And like people are taking it off of the off of the table or off of the countertop. And like they have okay. like, these big, get big buckets of popcorn. Uh, but as you try to walk up to them, you hear, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, sir, the line starts back there. And you see this man dressed in a suit uh, with like a kind of a leisure suit. And he's pointing back to the end of the line. And he's like, we've we live in a society Line is back there. Thank you. Uh, apologies. Uh, do you know where Nostalgia Jack is? <sighs> Upstairs on the far side kind of points over and you can see there's this set of stairs that go up to what looks like a second level of the theater itself. Uh, uh, up there by the projector room. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? And he's just standing there with nope, this. He like, did great. I'll stuff. pat him on the shoulder okay. as I walk away. <laughs> and it is physical. You, pat, you tap on the shoulder, and he's, oh god, ah. Uh. And don't forget, you look <laughs> horrific. All of you look horrific because yeah. all of you have been swimming in toxic sewage uh, inside. Mm. Mm-hmm. Know, so like you, so he's like, oh goodness, Karen, Karen, please get it off, get it off. And like this woman standing next to him, and this beautiful like like uh, like summer dress that comes over and starts to clean it off as well. Like oh oh Henry, it's fine. You're being you're being such a putz. Uh, and uh, as the two of them sort of exchange a bit. Uh, okay, so 
do you go that? Do you go up? Do you go up to talk to Jack? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Just All to right. make the dude happy, I'll bloom a flower that matches his suit and put it in the pocket. Uh, oh! Oh goodness! Oh God! Oh! Uh, uh, thank you, sir. I'm just kind of looking at you, confused at this point. Oh goodness, Karen! They'll just Wait, let anyone in hand. here these days. <laughs> you can wave your hand. Karen, they'll just let anyone into here these days. Oh, goodness. Uh, and then you wander off. Uh, okay, so eventually you find yourselves uh, up by the projector's office. The projector office, excuse me. And when you kind of knock on the door, and, you just, and again, it's all like old school. It looks like all wooden and like frosted glass and such. And you can see projectors off it, you know, that kind of stuff. Um but you can see that there is like this old brass door doorknob handle. Everything looks just like completely like retro. Uh, but you knock on and you hear, "Come on in, hurry now, hurry now." Open the door and poke my head in. Reginald, is that you? Uh, no, my name's Clover. Are you Nostalgia Jack? And you peek your head in, and you can see there is a. Uh, a woman, uh, kind of Catherine Hepburn type, you know, sharp, like angular features, like wide set eyes. You can see a tailored suit, uh, hair and like this wavy bob. And you can see that she's got like and right off to one side. There is this big old ashtray where you can see a, a long like cigarette sticking out of it. And the whole room is just filled with this haze of smoke. And you can see all these tarnished old metal tins filled with authentic film. Uh, and she's got like, you know, like smudges on her fingers here and there. You can tell she's got a thing like she's got one of those little magnifying glasses, things up to their eyes. She's looking at what looks like a realm of, uh, like a ream of film. Uh, and then she looks over Clover, Clover. Do I know that name? Do I know you? Uh, probably not. Hopefully. Nope. Well, why is it then you're in my office then? We're looking for Nostalgia Jack. And we got pointed this way. I understand that. I'm Nostalgia Jack, and you are in my office, and now I want to know why you're in my office and why you've been pointed here. Oh, yeah. And I'll usher everyone in after me. Yeah. Okay, now there's more people in here, and I still have not gotten an answer as to why you're in my office. One low birth centers. Oh, good. Why didn't you just say so? Come on in. Sit down, please. Sit, sit, sit. And you can see, like, there's all these random, like, you know, wooden chairs, like nothing looks particularly comfortable in here. Everything looks very authentic. You realize for the first time, like there's really not a whole lot of flickering happening in here. Like all of this seems very like well kept. Um, you don't smell that kind of floral scent, but it's just smoke in here. And the whole room is hazy with smoke. Um, but Are you she's... Sure? Are you sure you want us sitting? Um, we uh, took a bit of a spill on the way here. We can stand if you need us to. Well, if you want to stand, you go right ahead. But is the floor carpeted? Uh, no, the floor is like uh, is like this glistening uh, like hardwood floor. I can tell it's been okay. like refinished. Okay, uh, I'll just pop us seat on the ground. I'll, I'll do my Slav squat. Well, aren't you two just so very considerate? Thank you. That's so very kind of you. Now, you've been sent here. Yep. Okay, then. So we then get down to business. You all look very much the worse for wear. I trust you had some trouble getting out here. Yeah, yeah we the... were attacked by giant alligator boats. Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. So you have met the Silkbound. They are, shall we say, uh, tenacious. And uh, normally that sort of tenacity is something I could respect and admire. But in this case, I find it a pain in my rump. Yes, I do. And I would very much like you all to alleviate that pain. Oh. How Absolutely. alleviated a little bit of it on the way over. How alleviated? Like thoroughly removed or just flattened out a little? Well, I certainly wouldn't say no to a, a very thorough extermination. Okay. Now, um, 
what information do you have on where they are, how we find them? These are very excellent questions. Well done. Well done, sir. Now, the truth is, is they have been slowly overtaking many of our Habs. Uh, we have, for many years now, we've controlled much of Sunken California until recent months when the Siltbound seemed to have grown in power and tenacity. Exactly why they have is under some consideration, but there's reason to believe from sources I trust that they seem to have stumbled upon a thin place that seems to be, well, some sort of den for an underwater creature of some kind, and they have worshipped it in some sort of way, and that has driven them in this manner. So, where you can find them? Well, just about anywhere down here. Not in this hab. This one we still have, at least under our control. This is one of the only ones we actually have in control. Um, but if you're looking for their headquarters, a way to actually access the old aquarium where they have sort of made their makeshift shrine, well, that means you're going to have to go through C-132. Once you get through C-132, then you can get over to G-207, and that is exactly where the aquarium used to be. What it is now, I couldn't tell you. I haven't been there. Now, the problem, of course, is that C-132 has completely overrun with Silkbound. This is the most recent one. Uh, it was about two weeks ago, I would say, that uh, they managed to fully invade bypass our security systems, and, well, not everyone was able to evacuate in time. Uh, we closed the doors as best we could. We solidified our fortifications here, but not everyone made it out. So, your job is not a... not looking for you to save people, though if you could, that'd be fabulous, of course. But it would be very nice if you could... Well, halt things, cut the head off the proverbial snake, or, as far as I understand it, possibly not proverbial at all. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Follow-up question. Are you yes. looking to recover C-132 or any additional HABs? Of course, yes. Uh, okay. Total destruction of a HAB would be against the purposes that we need them for. We need them to be habitable, hence the name. But excellent question. Excellent question. You are very astute. Very astute. Now, a personal plea. Um, there are additional tasks I would, well, I would put in front of you, should you be able to accomplish them as well. And naturally, there will be a bonus, should you be able to. A very dear friend of mine, perhaps you've heard of her, Coco Almond, she has, well, she was taken by the Siltbound. She's being held captive, I believe, within their stronghold. If you could perhaps recover her, that would be... Well, that would go... Well, that would go a great, a great deal going get, getting to the bottom of my heart. Yes, it would. Okay. We then, know Coco Almond? Yes, Coco Almond. We go back a do, very long way. We, do we know that? Nick? And she, you see, she pulls up her arm and she like types into her forearm. You can just see her fingers come out. She types in her forearm. It doesn't look like you don't see any keys or anything. And then this projection comes up in the middle of the room. And it is the exact same projection that you saw when you were coming down the elevator and there was a uh, woman trying to sell you real estate. This has right. Coco Almond. Uh, mm. She's a dear friend. Very dear. And you can tell like, like her face gets a little kind of downtrodden a little bit as she mentions it. I, uh, well, what, what they we could have done her, to her. She's all silty. She's all silty. Just yeah, what is it do you think they do like, to these uh, people? Well, I don't know. They're all weird and silty and like changed by the water and stuff. There were I don't some know how they do crusty that. Crusty ones that we came across. Yeah. Yes. Crusty, those all were. Were. Those are the silk bound, after all. They take mm. on certain shapes and visages as a way to honor that mythoi who seems to give them power. 
Do, are there rumors of what the name is of this one that they are now worshipping? The Makara. This is something you would know. Yeah, we heard that. Yeah, the previous yeah, we, yeah. I think we figured that out. Do you know? Okay. Because um, you you fortified and blocked off the way to one C uh, to C one thirty two. Yes. Is there any alternate way in or way we could sneak in besides well, your fortified entrance? Short of uh, acquiring yourself a submersible, which unfortunately we do not have. Uh, no, I cannot think okay. of one. You could speak with Glitch. Glitch could possibly give you an alternate entrance. She is the okay. one who knows where all the pipes lead. Hmm. If you want to find her, she go down the street to tomorrow's diner. She'll be able to help you. Is she the big one in the coveralls, please? Uh, yeah, you've sense. met her already. I see. Yes, that's her. She's a very hard worker that she, that she is. Not a member of the collective exactly, but I'll tell you, Maya Corp doesn't deserve her, but that's neither here nor there. Get in. Cut the head off the snake. Recover cocoa almond. Don't destroy any habs. Very efficient. You're an excellent listener, boy. Excellent listener. Now, there is one other task. If possible, this would be very helpful. You'll see, um, the Silkbound has been able to, um, well, they have been causing trouble for several months now, you'll see. It began simply because they were able to hack into our domain. Well, the Maya Corp domain, that is. And in doing so, that gave them access to our uh, our server nodes, where we store a variety of data. And it also gave them access to some of our augmentation overlay controls, which, uh, if you have been anywhere, you can see they are, well, faltering. Now, I am a little bit more concerned about the data. I have no interest in letting them have information about our clientele here. After all, privacy is paramount. If you could perhaps get to the server node within C-132, you might be able to extract that data, or at the very least, you could reactivate uh, remote access so that I could gain it here. What state the server nodes are in, I can't particularly tell you, I can say that whenever the Siltbound take over a hab, they revert it back to something that they consider our natural. Okay. They do not care for our uh, architecture. So you will see water and sludge and their monstrosities and whatever... Um, effigies that they decide to encrust upon that with which we have built and spent our labor on all these years. What did they want with the data? It's an excellent question that I do not have the answer to. If we can't... Because they're all kind of crusty and just tacky. They are, in fact, very crusty and tacky. There's an excellent way to put it. You are a poet. Thanks. <laughs> you are quite welcome. If we can't recover or turn on remote access, do we need to make sure they can't access the data? As in destroy it? That would be not an ideal outcome. Okay. Recovering the data is secondary only to the recovery of Coco and the cutting the head off of the snake, or at the very least, somehow denying these Cretans access to this holy place that they seem to have stumbled upon. Okay. Now, I can provide you some temporary access codes for the AR systems, and this will allow you, should you come across any uh, 
any locked doors, so to speak, within C-132 that have not yet uh, been overtaken by the ecology that the Siltbound bring with them. Uh, it'll allow you to traverse it much more simply. Uh, that is a simple task. And she, again, types in her arm. And then you can see, like, this visible hologram screen, like, appears above her forehead. And then she just kind of swipes it in your directions. And you see it, like, make five copies and just span out into each of you. And whatever devices that you might have, if any of you have, like, tech devices on you, it essentially, like, absorbs that and kind of takes that in. Now... If there are any other questions that I could ask, I would be more than happy to, uh, more than happy to provide answers, should I be able. I did have uh, one question. Uh, we, uh, apologies, Ivan. Uh, we had to seek, uh, medical help with Dr. X for our, uh, pilot on the trip over. Did you now? What are our chances that uh, he receives the treatment? And well, I can tell you is that discharged. Doctor X and the whole Roosevelt crowd. Well, they are they are not approved, but we have one issue at a time, and the Siltbound are far more priority than the Cretans and the crudeness of that place. Dr. X is a talented surgeon, but he is a devious man. I can tell you that if you were honest with him and truthful with him, and if you paid him sufficiently, he will render the services that you have requested. If you have attempted to, well, circumvent those prices, we would never. you might never see your friend again. Or if you do, it will look far different. Well, we tried. So, oh, um, we... I would say he was paid most of what was discussed. Well... I am not his accountant, but I can tell you that those who have attempted to swindle Dr. X have not had particularly pleasing outcomes. Do, uh, gonna, sort of, does Riker know about this uh, 15 minutes versus yeah, half hour? Most of us thing? don't know. No. Probably no. not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Verona would just okay. look back to Ivan um, and just say, well, okay. perhaps... So, uh, Ry Riker has no reason to think there's any yeah. issues with yeah. what happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Apart from potentially being overheard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Verna will look back to Ivan and just say, well, perhaps the 30 minutes was split in 15 minutes before and 15 minutes after the work is done. Yeah. That's maybe. a solid maybe. Or we head back over, talk to Dr. X let him know that we're getting into C-132 and see if there's anything that we can do in C-132 to cover the rest of our debt. I would prefer if you did not inform Dr. X of the task that I have assigned you. We... I can dig that. Yeah. If we Perhaps don't let we... him know what we're doing in C-132, could we offer that without? My concern, if that Dr. X sees that access to C-132 has been opened, then he will exploit that for his alternative motives. Okay. It's best that we leave the good doctor out, out of, of our plans entirely. I wish okay. you would have come here first. We have a very adequate medic here on staff. I could have provided medical services as we part of our contract. Concerned. Yeah. We were concerned and it was enacted panicking. hastily. You know, if you put signs up somewhere, that... You know. <laughs> but... Oh, okay. we do. We have the Orthium Theater advertisements everywhere. 
Well, it doesn't exactly say that there's medical services yeah. at the theater. Well, that's there's normally not, but in the case yeah. of this situation, I could have provided it, yes. Fair enough. <laughs> We are still renovating the Habs, and there are occasional accidents here and there, as you might imagine. People get sick, mm -hmm. people get injured, and sometimes they need to be tended to. I, I will not make any misgiving. Dr. X is a, as I said, very talented surgeon. Perhaps yeah. too talented for his own good. Might it be possible to... Uh... While we go and do this task, uh, perhaps get a note over Dr. X's way and IOU 15 minutes. And Can we get part of our paycheck in advance? No. Wait, you, you I, I have an idea. Full, I'll make wait, a bouquet for him. No, no. Hang on. You, you guys didn't do the full 30? No. Uh, listen, Rana was looking really rough. With just the 15 minutes. Um, and Dr. X was like, we're going to take 30 minutes and like Capri Sun. So it looked, I, Ivan does good work. It looked like 30 minutes, uh, but 30 minutes of time will probably not equal the volume that he was expecting. It may not immediately raise a red flag, but. Now that we know the sort of individual that we're dealing with. Rika kind of looks like, like I, I'm not usually the shiniest apple in the barrel, but there was nothing about Dr. X that came off as them being a good person. How am I the only person that caught that? I, mean, I didn't like him. He's no, I didn't he's either. Offering services? With, he, he's with, not offering he services. He, he's selling services for blood. That's not the same. Well, I mean, we well, didn't I bet have he would have taken money if we would have offered. If we I had just money. Think we oh, have very much so, yes. Okay. If you had credits, he, 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 he would have taken credits. Oh, one final. Speaking of things that are neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. One, one final question. Uh, before we head off to C-132, is there a place where we could get cleaned up, maybe catch a well, quick rest before we dig in? You certainly could. Uh, if you would like, I could get you uh, rooms across the street. However, you will probably very quickly get yourselves dirty again. But if you wish to have a rest, we could certainly arrange for that. If you think your rest and your friend are more important than the contract that you've been offered, that's perfectly understandable. I we don't all have it's our not... priorities, I understand. Well, mainly it's just we're all covered in toxic sludge. And Oh, yes, yes. You're going to be wading that... through it, I fear. Yeah, getting that I need new shoes. May... He needs new shoes. You got some, like, Air Max? I see. We do have a cobbler here within, and I mean a true one, who actually does create uh, footwear that is suitable for the 20th century, so if you wouldn't mind wearing one of those, I'm sure we could put together something. Not necessarily the best footwear for traipsing through these overtaken hubs, but if that is your wish, we could provide it. Do you have, like, a hose out back we can just kind of hose ourselves off with real quick? Well, we with do have a hose. Water. I wouldn't use the one out back. I doubt it's filtered, but we could provide one. As I said, we could provide you rooms across the street if that's what you're going to want, and you could clean yourselves up before heading off to take care of this task that you've been assigned. I, I, I agree. I think having us not uh, start off already uh, yeah. in the negative, as it were, might help us fulfill your task uh, more successfully. I see. Well, one moment, and she pulls up her arm, starts typing, and then just again throws this in your direction. 
walk across the street, scan that at the door, and you'll be able to be go on up to the third floor, and you'll find yourselves wonderful furnishings and a suite suitable for the five of you. Where can I get cobbled? You can get cobbled. Oh, well, that's four that blocks the, to the is west. That the terminology. That is appropriate, I suppose. Yes. Okay. There is a I'm trying to courier adapt. Courier services here. Courier services. Uh, yes. Y- yes, we do send old-fashioned messages. You might say would... those of us are more inclined to send physical messages. Yes, but we also have a domain we have access to. You can send messages freely on it. Well, I, I like old-fashioned. In fact, I'd like to put together a bouquet of sorts and have it sent to the good doctor in appreciation of his efforts. I see. Well, again, I think that can be a rage. Speak with Reginald in the lobby, and I'm sure he could sort that out for you. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, you have been far more accommodating to the hired help than what you needed to. Thank you. Yes, it's a very curious inversion of the normal role situation, don't you think? It is, and thank you. You are welcome. Now, Clover, was it? Yes? Yes. Four blocks west, head north, towards the Hollywood sign. Look for a place. It's authentic now. It is called Foot Locker, and you'll find some wonderful gear. Okay. (laughs) Why would they lock their feet I don't head that way. Okay. I'm pretty sure my shoes were destroyed when I was doing, like, the water (laughs) That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So... Do you all just go and try to clean up? Is that your your goal? Mm-hmm. That's my okay. goal. I want to get rid I, of that toxic I think tag. Trying to get rid of that toxic tag, exactly. I, okay. I generally actually do want to put together a bouquet of sorts. Okay. Uh, maybe using a combination of floral overgrowth and science experiment. I want to create some flowers that will be kind of bloomed where they're ready to harvest. Basically mm-hmm. a combination of poppy flowers and oh. uh, night bloom. Okay. The sort of thing that somebody who maybe is of uh, that nature of doctor would make use of and okay. send that with a an appreciation of your efforts i like it um so this is going to be a role just to see if you can well i mean i think he, i think you can do it like you can i can grow stuff but if, it, yeah. if it's if it's if it's in a if it's of a stasis towards any use to him like yeah it's that, one that's thing what i'm grow. thinking of yeah well, because I would think that you can do it. It's not like an issue. Like if you're given given the time without any stress, I think you can do it. It's just a question of whether it's going to have any effect. If like mm-hmm. if it's going to have the desired effect, right? Yeah. yeah I've, yes, uh, I. I would really love to loan a tag to Garricus um, for this. Uh, has a soft side. Um, I would really like to leverage that to help him make this bouquet of nightshade and poppies into the most aesthetically pleasing yeah make it look real pretty okay i would like to toss in that i'm going to waste almost all of my time doing this instead of doing it quickly because i do have a sedentary lifestyle i kind of take my time crafting it maybe tap into that negative thing that he can't help himself but kind of try and make it just right all right. In this case, then, if you're gonna if you're gonna take your time on it, ta- you can tap into your tag. I would say that means you're going to lose out on the opportunity to clean yourself with the toxic tag. Exactly. All yes. right. We're on the same page. Uh, give it a roll, but you're gonna get a minus two because mm-hmm. he is not particularly happy with the right. two with you guys right now. So there's gonna be a minus two because you have you have you okay. have kind of. You sort of uh, two things essentially. You have uh, let me double check it. Not all the blood was drawn, and some unkind words were spoken about him uh, within the halls <laughs> in which he actually has surveillance equipment. So those two things are going to result in uh, and, a pl- and a plus one from Ivan soft side. Ah, uh, sure, you can take that. All right, well, that gives yeah. me a net of plus one then. Okay, Just I like it. Wrong. Okay, so I'll have a seven plus one eight. Okay. Uh, eight will be a success with consequences. Yeah, it's, uh, it's there. So, okay. So basically, this will assuage him somewhat, essentially. But there will be consequences 
down the line for this. So it's not necessarily consequences are going to appear right this second, but mm-hmm. there could be narrative consequences later. Okay, so sent. I'm writing this down so I don't forget. Sent bouquet <laughs> with consequences. It's okay. better than nothing. It is. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely better than nothing. Yeah. Now Never he finish. might just have fish gills when you get him back, Granny, <laughs> as opposed to <laughs> 16 arms or something like that. I'm so I've looking forward to the next time we see it's Granny. Gonna <laughs> it's going to be that. It's going to be like 10 grimy clones in a human centipede mass is basically what it's going to be. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> One big circle. All right. Um, okay. So, and then Clover, you wanted to go get shoes? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. They're not free. So just so you know, there is actually an economy. So. Okay. So Clover, what are you, what are you potentially trying to, what, what do you have either that you can give over uh, or like like you can burn a tag if there's if there's something that's like possession that you could burn like you're giving it over or if there is something that you can make similar to the way like a Garricus can kind of make something so so what is it you would do to try to kind of earn the the shoes that you're getting here <laughs> uh <laughs> you've got right, if wait. i don't just have money <laughs> <laughs> you have, I mean, you have money. But you have money. You can do that. But do you don't, I'm not sure if you have the. Uh, I mean, you have credits. Like you can certainly do that. I mean, the only other thing I do for money is I uh, I make guns. So I'll be like, hey, oh, good gracious. any shoes? Do you want a gun? So <laughs> you you go into Foot Locker, uh, which is a beautiful place. <laughs> And you can see there's leather, there's, there's leather lounge chairs everywhere. There's men and women smoking cigars and reading newspapers. Um, and you see a man that looks like Daniel day Lewis and he's wearing an apron and he's got his sleeves rolled up. Uh, and he comes up to you and he's got like a little, like a wound down on one eye. And he's like, well, uh, welcome to foot locker. Uh, is there a particular design you're looking for today? Um, I guess whatever's uh, comfortable and mm. durable. I see. I see. Comfortable and durable. Well, we have many, many different shoes that we could provide you that would be both comfortable and durable. Let me ask you, sir. What are you going to be using these for? Consider yourself an explorer. You consider yourself a dancer, perhaps. Dancer. Uh, not much of a dancer. More of a... a you have two I do a lot feet. of walking. Man after my own heart. Uh, a lot, a lot of business? A lot of walking? Is that... Yeah, so you want a walking shoe that is comfortable and that will last. Ooh. Yes. Let me see your feet. Oh, goodness gracious, sir. To keep your feet in better condition than this. What's wrong with you? It looks like you've soaked them in battery acid. Yeah, uh, they took a little bit of a dip. Mm, I see. Well, you're very flat arches. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. This looks ingrown. You should probably get this looked at. Uh, definitely not Dr. Rex, though. He'll probably grow some strange creature out of the toenail itself. Oh, goodness. Well... Yes, I think I have just the thing for you. And so he starts reaching back into this like kit and he's opening up this trunk and he's pulling out these different, you know, these different uh, like pieces of equipment. And you can see these like some of it's leather, some of it's like plastic, rubber, stuff like that. Wood. He's kind of hammering some things together. And when after like an hour goes by of this montage of him piecing something together, he gives you a a pair uh, of Crocs and he just hands them over to you. Fantastic. No, I'll put so them in fast. sport mode as I wear them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have Crocs now. All right. Authentic to 1947. All right. So. A while in a bit. You get your shoes. Are they leather Crocs? <laughs> they are leather Crocs with wooden <laughs> soles. <laughs> just like balls in the leather. It's the most uncomfortable shoe you've ever had. Okay. Um, <laughs> 
Okay, so so you get your shoes, uh, Agaricus. You send your bouquet. Uh, Verana and Ivan and Rika, with the three of you looking to clean yourselves. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Take a few I minutes. just yes, want to get rid of the toxic. Uh, okay. Uh, well, what you can do is you can reduce it by one. So any of you who might have two, you can only reduce it down to one. But if you're at one, you can reduce it and just take it off. Or the okay. acid burns. Is that something that I might need to use some of my um, that would be, self-healing like an or accelerated regen gel to? Yes. Uh, okay. Exactly. Okay. So I need to do a roll to see if that is effective at bringing these acid burns down from a two to a one. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say if you're trying to do it quickly, cause you want to not spend too much time, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to do it quickly and just sort of tend to it yourself, yeah, sure. Okay. Would my um, uh, top fist I... nails power tag uh, come into play? It's not a healing when like Brenna, uh, Brenna's is his historic. Uh, I don't. That way. I don't really see why it's not a heal since it's not something that heals. It's more about like mitigation when the effect happens. And I think okay. we did use certain bits of it. Uh, when you were trying to mitigate consequences before. Got it, got it. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Ron. So I got an 11 on my roll. Okay. I'll say, uh, so that's a full success. So we'll go ahead and nice. reduce. So no consequences, no byproduct or anything. So I'll say with that, just, you can drop it. I'm sorry, you're making... One. Okay, so you can drop it down to down to one. And so I would say one more treatment of that, and you could probably clear up the, the burn itself. Nice. Okay, got nice. toxic one, acid burns one, and blood drain one. Okay. So, uh, we'll say a couple oh, hours. Oh, you were pass. toxic two before? Yep. Oh, brutal. I think, I think <laughs> Agaricus and Vrana, because they were in the water the longest. So, I think yeah. that's what yeah. it was. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we'll say a couple hours pass. You've been inside uh, the uh, this hab for a little while. Uh, some of you have gotten shoes. Some of you have sent in bouquets. Some of you have cleaned yourselves. Uh, is there any other things that you're looking to do? We're going to go talk to Glitch. Verona would want to, and I, I don't think I did this before, um, look through her access to occult tomes that she has on her to see if there's anything else about um, Makara. Makara. I think you've already done a roll on this. Um, okay. Like first, yeah, I think it might have been first, first or second session. I think I think okay. we did a, an occult role. I'm yeah. not sure if it was you or Clover, but I think we've done like a okay. like a I research was, test I did on investigation it. on it. With, yeah. uh, okay, got it. So I'm an investigator, and I had knowledge of occult. We yeah, got a perfect. Bit. Okay, then we'll just share notes. Okay. Anything else? No, I'm gonna go clock, talk nope. to Glitch, figure out if there's a back entrance into c-132 okay go to the diner all right so so you were directed to tomorrow's diner uh and when you head there uh, and you know how to get there at this point it's becoming easier to navigate uh you can see the neon sign flickers on it's again it's a little more anachronistic the outside looks more like a roadside like highway diner but then when you go inside, you can see it definitely has this kind of 1950s sort of charm. But it doesn't look like the aug emitters are working very well here as everything's just coated in this this grime. Um, but you do hear like there is a jukebox that seems to be functioning and it's kind of playing these like old Hollywood tunes and such. And there's bursts of static that are occasionally coming through and causes just weird sort of echo. Um, but you hear the sounds of like... But Sounds like uh, various equipment, like electrical equipment and machinery kind of going on from somewhere in the kitchen. You hear, and then stupid piece of shit. Ugh, hate this thing. And then something like slams. And when you peek in, you can see that same woman that you saw on the street dressed in those coveralls, those uh, kind of maintenance worker. Uh, she seems to be working on this wall. And the wall itself looks like it should be like a kitchen but instead it just looks like a series of these modern, uh, like these modern, like uh, uh, looks like monitors, but also various switches and things like that, that she's sort of digging into. Um, when she turns around, she looks at you. 
He's like, uh, what do you all want? And produces a cigarette out of nowhere. You find uh, medical attention you needed? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we uh, got our friend looked at, uh, and uh-huh. then we uh, spoke to Nostalgia Jack, who told us to talk to you. Yep, that sounds great. Is Can I help you with something? I got work to do. Yeah, we're uh, looking for a back wing to see... 31? <laughs> Why the hell are you going in there? Thank you. you. You all have a death wish? A little. Also known uh, as a job. Yeah, we got a job. We got to get to 132. Hey, I got, got a job too. Codes. You don't see me going in that piece of shit. But hey, yeah, your funeral, that's fine. You want a back door in? Eh, let's see. Yeah. Well, I mean, I could... Uh, obviously, I could just sort of bypass the security on the main entrance, but if you want a back way, yeah. You know, uh, the Golden Palm fountain, it's got some, uh, it's got some drainage pipes. Uh, kind of flows down into the sewers of this place. This place has got sewers. Uh, you could probably go down there. Uh, there's gonna be some kind of auxiliary hatch, I would imagine. Uh, you could float out into that. Uh, you're already pressurized, so you should be fine, as long as you don't go swimming up or nothing. Don't stay down there too long, because there's some creatures down there. Don't look out a window. You get nightmares. And you could probably swim over to the other og hatch, and if you know anything about, uh, you know, about engineering or something, you could probably rip that thing open on an issue. What's a good option if we don't know anything about engineering? Um, I mean, I can, like I said, I can open the main door for you, but they'll probably got that monitored. So, I mean, they look, uh, they look like monsters, but they ain't stupid. Hmm. So don't swim up. Don't look out the window. Don't engage with the creatures. Oh, definitely not. Especially them jellies. <laughs> they do bad things to you. Real bad things. Got it. Got it. Is this like a nighttime thing? Nighttime. Like time of day? I mean, this, I mean, I don't even know what time it is on the surface. Every, it's always daytime except for like two hours we just sort of flip it over to nighttime we put the moon up people drink wine oh. they pass out that sort of thing we don't really have an internal clock here so it's those two hours might be the, the time. best time to try to go into the fountain for people not to see us uh i mean honestly most folks are pretty skittish ain't that many people actually out on the streets most of the folks okay. that you've probably been seeing aren't even real people. A handful here or there, I'm sure, but most of them uh, kind of hiding away and kind of plug it in, that sort of thing. Maybe seeing if they could back out of their contracts, tap it into their VR, you know, doing that sort of thing. The whole point of this place is to get us away from that. Maya Corp wants to do the augmentation reality, and everybody else up on the surface is doing the VR, and... I don't know. Kind of plug themselves into the various things in their apartments and forget that this place exists. Anyhow. Well, that'll probably work better for us then if we don't have a bunch of looky-loos that care too much about what we're doing. Okay. Uh, sure. I, I could switch it over the night whenever you want. It's just It's just that button right there. Oh, well, that's... I don't really care. I hate these fucking people, so... Yeah, yeah. In the, in my right, earlier like, days, actually, I might have found no, amusement in that. Appreciative laughter. <laughs> like, sometimes, just for fun, I mess with their, their HVAC. Here, one sec. Flip, comes over, 
she punches like a couple codes in. <laughs> it's gonna be like fifty degrees inside their apartments. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Anyhow, um, okay, sure, I could do that. I could, I can help you out. Um, so, anything else? I don't think so. I think we're good. Uh, yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, well, let me go ahead and just flip that. Oh, look, the sun went down. And then you hear like all sorts of stuff start going down inside the wall that she's been working on. Like, zzz, zzz, zzz. Um, and then you can tell when you look out the window of the diner, which is kind of in, you know covered in grime, you can see everything just very quickly just goes to night. And it's just suddenly it's nighttime. And everything's fine. All right. Well, hey, it was nice knowing you. We'll see you on yeah. the other side. Or maybe no, we won't. No, I don't think you will. Not, it, it's an expression more than a literal thing. Uh -huh. Back here. See you back here. Maybe. Oh, Unless I you guess die. you mean. And then you won't. When you guys die with this stupid thing you're doing, and then whenever I die eventually, then we're going to meet up in the afterlife or something. Yeah. Have a yeah. beer or whatever. Yeah. Go to Applebee's. That kind of I thing. I like that. Yeah. The, All right. th there's no reason for us to haunt you, so uh, yeah, I probably we'll wouldn't see you, see you before that. We'll owe you a blooming onion. A blooming onion, and I do like a blooming right? onion. Or is that that's Outback Steakhouse, buddy? But, uh, <laughs> My bad. Is there really a difference? Let's be There's not. two for twenty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Melissa knows my feelings on Applebee's. Okay, yeah, Applebee's. Yes, it's like my least favorite. <laughs> okay. All right, so you guys uh, get the the night shut. So it's turning the night. Glitch waves goodbye. Uh, gives you directions on how to get to the Golden Palm Fountain if you want it. Otherwise, is that so? That's what you're doing. You're going to climb down to the fountain. Yeah. Yes. And you're going to swim from like one half to the. You are pressurized, so it's like you've gone through pressurization. So you're going to swim from one half to the next, and you try to go in through like the sewer entrance. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is it like <laughs> toxic water or is it just sewer water? I mean, it's the toxic water we just got out of, it's right? It's everything you just I got feel out like of. that's not a good idea. The I mean, we sneak in through the toxic water door <gasps> or we go in through the front door and they know where we are. There's the slowly kills you or the instantly kills you. We're, we're all going to end up have in like the same a bunch place of anyway. Plastic bags or something we can wear. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at busting through walls. Let's say I'm very good at you know, absorbing a lot of punishment. Um, the, the poisonous water is a bit more difficult to deal with. So do we front door it? I mean, that. I mean, I don't want to take you away from your backdoor proclivity, so I'm terribly sorry if that's the the way you took it. Honestly, I, I don't. I'm not that great at swimming, so maybe front door. I can bust through the wall if we go through front door. Oh yeah. I'm not sure I mean, she she could open well. the front door like for I you. I haven't shot shot stuff in like a minute. Let's go front door and give you a chance to shoot something. We'll, I'll run back in real quick. Like, yeah, can you open the front door? We don't want to. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> I was very confused because you guys are asking those questions about what if we don't know anything about machines? And I'm like, okay, then go to the front door. And you're like, okay, we'll make it dark. So I'm like, all right, why am I? I was, I was very confused, but I didn't really want to make it look like you guys didn't know what you were doing. So <laughs> that's what you get from Applebee's people. <laughs> I love that place. Two for 20. It's fantastic. Get a little, get a little hamburger, get some wings. All like of it this. tastes the same. But that it looks fajita different. Fajita skillet that they bring out that's sizzling. Yeah. The you know food's still sizzling? cold, but it's sizzling. Well, it's because they put it in the microwave on high for like 20 minutes. That's why. Oh, is that it? It's pretty good. Microwave. Wonderful invention. It's the best. That's how you know it's a fancy place when it sizzles when it walks by. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right. So you head over to the front. Uh... So you head over to the main, sort of the main entry point that connects 
this half to the other. Uh, and Glitch goes ahead, goes to the process, opens it. It's not an issue. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's the one who locked it down to begin with. And kind of, cr- and like you see in front of you is this tube uh, that's glassy, uh, but you can tell it's like there's portholes more like along the way here and there. If you wanted to look out, you could. Uh, but it's about 50 yards. So it's like a 50 yard walk. Um, and as you're walking, and she doesn't follow you. She closes the door behind you and says, see ya. And she gives you instructions on how you could potentially uh, open the thing. Uh, she sort of direction uh, directs you. You see along the way uh, a couple bodies. Um, definitely that didn't make it. Uh, and you can see some of them have suffered a bit here and there. Uh, you can look out some of the portholes and you can see the flickering lights here and there floating around in the ridiculously dark water. Uh, and then eventually you make it to the other side. Uh, it doesn't seem as though there were any, like there were any people within the, this, uh, this tube. Uh, and I'm going to need someone to go ahead and give me a roll, uh, put together a pool. And because what you see in front of you is a door, not unlike the one you just came through, uh, except this one you can see is encrusted with various barnacles, uh, and all sorts of other toxic uh, sewage in sort of deep sea growth. Uh, so you're trying to essentially, so someone put together a pool to try to like get through this and open it up. Who would, uh, who wants to take the spotlight on that? Rana just looks to Rika as in like after oh, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I don't have any finesse on this, but if people are okay with it, I, I mean, that's uh, where I'm at. Like, I delve in armor juggernaut bust through walls and imposing physique. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to just bust through the barnacle and crystal door. Okay. Give me a roll the pool. Um, at least busting gonna... through the barnacle part of it. Well, the whole thing is encrusted. So give me, um, so the pool is going to be, so I'm going to say two things against you, barnacle and crusted, but also reinforced. So it's minus two, uh, from those two tags on the door itself. Got it. Got it. So it's a plus one net. Okay. Uh, sorry, give me just one second. Hmm? Uh, and so what tags did you use again? Uh, armored juggernaut, buster mm-hmm. walls, and imposing physique. Sounds good. Uh, I wonder if any of my weaknesses come into play here. I don't feel like they do. No, I don't really think so. No. Okay, so I'm at eight. What do you mean? You're at eight. Uh, what does that mean? Eight was my was my rule. Okay, so basically that's going to be a success with consequences. So you bust through it. Uh, it is extremely painful as the barnacles just cut through your armor and your physique. Uh, you're going to take, uh, let's see, it's an eight. You're going to take uh, shredded, so like you're basically cut up two. Uh, as as you bust through, you are like it, it kind of rips through some of your armor. You can feel it kind of cutting into your into your skin, uh, and kind of and you you feel more in more than one place across your body. Uh, it has penetrated through uh, your armor and cut into you. Are you able to mitigate that at all you with can, other tags? But you cannot use the same tags that you just used to right. do this. So you can't use armor juggernaut. You can't use bust through walls. You can't use no. opposing f- physique. I was wondering if I might use tough as nails and protective yeah. armor. I think that sounds good. So um, you can use you can use tough as nails. Okay. Yeah, you can use tough as nails. I don't see protective armor. Where am I seeing that? Why am I not seeing that? Uh, it's oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Right. Yeah, 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 I see it. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and yeah, you can use both of those. Okay. Uh, Thirteen. Okay, so uh, you're able to mitigate the consequences of everything. Like your armor manages to kind of keep its. Like you can feel the pressure of the cuts. Uh, but once you start to look at where it manages to penetrate through the armor itself and you look, none of it really breaks skin too much. It presses against you. You can see your armor has probably been damaged to a degree. 
uh, but it's probably not to the point where it's completely unusable. Uh, but you can definitely tell it's taken some uh, it's taken some cuts. Uh, in addition to that, the right when the door, right, right when you kind of bust through the door itself, you hear a just going off the landing area is not unlike the one that you saw when you first came down uh from the elevator itself you can kind of see but it's not there's no aug like it's all just this crusty every this sort of crusty looking place with uh coral growth algae you can see that there's you're splashing around in water uh you can see what looks like these old concrete buildings and what looks like these rusted and corroded like catwalks here and there like you're seeing what these habs actually were before Maya Corp started putting all these overlays over top of them. Uh, and it's very dark. You don't really see a whole lot of light and electricity, but you do see right above you, there is this giant red light that is flashing with each one of the and you hear from somewhere up ahead in the darkness uh who's going next is there any kind of i'm so sorry just a little bit of housekeeping uh am i shredded one no you don't get it you 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 get enough power that you could take away both okay yeah you you could take away both go ahead sorry to drop chuck no it's okay uh is there any kind of terminal or anything in the area you do see a around on the inside much like the one that uh uh, that glitch was working on. There is one of these corroded, covered in like gunk and grime. You can see like these strips of algae are like hanging down from it. But yeah, you definitely see this entrance okay. terminal. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. I don't know how to hack, but I know how to <laughs> break electronics. Okay. Um, I would run over to it. Okay. And see if I can leverage some of my abilities to at least shut the alarm up okay i can't take uh, with that loud noise going put together a pool uh yeah i'll go with um i'll use tech gremlin cause malfunctions um do you think evade surveillance would work here i feel uh, maybe um, like a stretch i don't think you're really evading surveillance anymore no. so yeah okay. uh, i'll just go with the two yeah Yeah, Ooh, uh, I don't really see any tags that would work against you. So yeah, just roll with that. Yeah, it's it's an eight. Okay, uh, successful consequence. Uh, I give you an option. Then one of you yeah. either get the flashing light goes off or the sound goes off, but the other one stays. I would like the the sound to go off. So the sound goes off, but there's still this like blinking giant yeah. red light, and it's at that point. As in between those flashes of red lights that the <laughs> you see leaping out from the darkness uh, and in between this kind of flashing strobing red light is this, I mean, creature is probably the best dis best description of it. This reptilian like creature with these four massive scale covered arms this long tail with spikes at the end and with what looks like this elongated neck that turns into a mouth that looks more like a snake head than it does look like a crocodile head and it leaps at you ivan as you turn around and you're yeah. you're sort of messing around with this and it just leaps out of the darkness and goes right at you um you can so you're gonna be at this point um what's it called uh, you're going to be punctured three as Ooh. this ma this big old mouth just snaps down right onto your back. You can mitigate it, though, if you have anything that you want to uh, mitigate it with. So what kind of tags might you have to try to roll to like sort of defend yourself in this case? I really don't have any that I think would make sense for something in this. I mean, it. I'm either a troublemaker or I can deal with having a zero doubt identity or magic versus tech or with fire. Mm. Um, 
Yeah, nothing that's particularly defensive, really. No, I don't, yeah, really, I don't really have see anything much. defensive. <laughs> you have okay. a soft side, which is not I, going to help you in this. I'm a very glass cannon-y <laughs> character. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, roll it flat then. Uh, and, at, you know, it's always possible you could at least mitigate it by one, because you can, even if you're not sure. spending power, if you, if you, like, roll well, you still would get one power. Okay. Uh, and if you crit, you would potentially get two power. So you still have the potential. Uh, I got a five. Okay, so in this case, <laughs> that's appropriate. what happens that's is just... this thing, yeah, this thing leaps out of the darkness in between the flashing lights, and you all, as Rika, you're kind of still getting up at this point and stabilizing from when you just knocked through this giant metal freaking door encrusted with barnacles, and you're just sort of, you know, kind of woozy a little bit maybe, and there's this massive creature just leaps out and lands on Ivan. Ivan, this is going to do two things. You're gonna be punctured three as you feel its its mouth just wrap around you and these fangs just tear into your body and you're also prone. Uh, so go ahead and add that. Uh, and those of you that are here, you hear the sounds of and it's like ting, 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 and you look up and you can see the shadows of a second one of these creatures running along this catwalk in your direction and you also notice this spiked tail from the one that's on Ivan, like reach up like it's about to slam down as well. Who would like to take the spotlight in this case? Um, okay. Uh, so maybe uh, snakes hate the smell of oleander. It repels them. So create a crisscrossing weave of vines and whatnot, and then start sprouting oleander from them to make this whole passageway reek of that oleander smell that snakes hate to try and make this be a place that they don't want to be. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I, I, I can't see... really think of anything else to apply to that, but that seems like a good way yeah. to... I don't see anything in here in its tags or statuses that I would use to negative put negatives on you so i think you could just roll it with whatever it is you put together okay. that'd be two uh so that'd be a six and a four 12 12 is fantastic so that is a success with Ooh. no consequence so you're gonna get so you have two power to spend to like the repulsed uh, or I, I don't know just i have uh i have a i have limits that i think this will go towards so limits mm. are basically like I mean, you can think of them as health pools, but it's just essentially gotcha. ways to, it's just, it's just count and counter ending things. Mm -hmm. And so there's one that I think this would sort of fit in. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it there. It's not enough to drive it away just yet, mm -hmm. but you, you can see it's, it's, it's like, and it kind of gets this, um, it kind of gets a little distracted. And so what I'll say is that's going to, um, not just, are you going to, help work on its limit i'm going to say that that's going to answer the threat of the tail coming up as it's now distracted from it and so it doesn't the tail doesn't swoop down um okay so however uh i'm going to say the one that's running up on the on the, the catwalk uh will like swoop down and splash down into the water it's not going to attack anyone immediately but it kind of turns gets the sense of everything and you see it then begin to charge at the at the group where the door is open and it's like literally trying to burst through this door and into the tunnel where like Verana and Clover are still standing. I'm gonna say Agaricus and Ivan and Rika had to kind of step in to do the things that they did. Verana and Clover, this thing's barreling down on the two of you. Uh, what would you guys like to do? Verona would turn to the one that's coming towards uh, her and Clover. Okay. And so she would like to just haul after it. So she's got her ritual dagger out and she knows her ancient fighting techniques and she is going to uh, do what she can with this very scary thing running towards them. Okay. Uh, so you're just get so this, so you're just going to try to stab it with your knives and things like that? Yeah. Okay, this does have thick hide, I... so I'm going to put a minus one for its thick hide. Go okay. ahead, Clover. Okay. And can I try to, like, distract it and do my share the luck tag? Kind of like a sister maneuver to draw its attention a little bit. Give okay. her a yeah. better shot. All right, so yeah, like, the, like you're trying to get it to 
to sort of yeah. come to you that she, so she can slip around and, and kind of stab in. Yeah. yeah, I can. We can say that. I think that makes sense. Uh, so thick, uh, thick scales. I meant not thick, uh, thick scales. So it's still going to have the minus one, you're, but you are going to get the plus one from Clover. So what do you okay, got? So it'll be plus two, then. Okay. Um, plus, uh, yeah, plus two. Okay. So plus two. Uh, total, so that's a four it. and a five. So eleven. Okay, fantastic. So this thing charges at you, but at the last second, it gets distracted by Clover and sort of leaps. It almost, because of that distraction, leaps at both of you at the same time, but in doing so, misses both of you. And as it stumbles down to the ground and turns around to try to take the attack, that's when, Verona, you come in and you bury the knife underneath. Uh, So how much power did you have to use? I had two. Okay, so do you want to put both of that towards giving it, like, give it, like, again, this is where you get to buy effects and things like that. So, that's right, what that's would right, you want right. to do? Um, I would like, I would like to put both of them towards uh, effects. Okay, so, so like, pierced okay. or some, some mm-hmm. kind of a thing Stab, like that. slash, something like yep. that? Okay. Yep, yep. Okay, we'll just do stabs since that's how you described it. So, we'll say stabbed too, basically. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, perfect, perfect. So, meanwhile, back in the other room, uh, actually, no, we'll stick with the tunnel for now. So, the tunnel room, so it's the one in the tunnel, and there's one kind of in the immediate landing area. The one in the tunnel area, as it's like, <sighs> you can see its tail leaps, like kind of raises up once more, and it looks like it's going to try to sweep it down through. Uh, so, again, introducing a threat. This sort of needs to be addressed, or I can follow through with a consequence. So I think the only person who hasn't actually done their own action is Clover. So Clover, is there something you would want to do if you took the spotlight here? Um, and he's trying to swipe at us. You see this big tail um, come up with spikes at the end, and it looks like it's going to sweep down through both you and Verona. Okay. Uh, I want to shoot it. I mean, I've got a gun, and I've got my weapon witching tag. So it's kind of mm-hmm. charged up with some energy okay. on it. Um, uh, yeah. And I, I want to aim at like, it's it's swinging its tail. So I want to try and hit it like in the tail to stop that. Uh, okay. Take my lucky shot tag as well. All right. So did you just give your... Hmm... Oh, you did share the luck for the other one. Okay. Yeah, so you're trying to yeah, do a lucky shot. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say it's thick this scales coming to play. Witching and lucky yeah. shot. I'll say that it's thick scales coming to play. It's a minus one. And if you're specifically trying to like shoot the tail, um, I would mm-hmm. say then you're like doing a cult shot. So that's, we'll say a minus one as well. So I'd say minus two total. Okay. Um, straight roll. So, yep. Yeah, straight roll. Seven. Seven's still going to succeed. So, so, so it's success with consequence. Uh, so what I'll say is you shoot at the tail and you manage to get a few shots off. And while you don't like rip through the tail, you shoot it in such a way that like you, you kind of shoot the, the spikes off. So like you, you, you just mm-hmm. unload a few and you see like these explosions, these expulsions of gore and some of the, and some of the horns and such fall out. The tail's still going to swoop down at you, and I'm going to say it's it's instead of it actually impaling you all, it's instead just going to first make you prone, uh, and then we'll say it'll do... Hang on. One sec. Um, yeah, we'll just say... We'll, we'll say prone one uh, and battered one, uh, is essentially, as opposed to, like, impaled. So you've lessened severely what that would have been. Um, That's both better. of you, both of you can mitigate okay. this though, if you wanted to try to mitigate. So this could either be something that's you could try to put together a pool that's evasive, uh, or you could try to put together a pool that absorbs something. Um, anything like that could potentially mitigate in this case. Yeah, um, I've got warding tattoos. Okay. All right, so you could probably Out of use my that defensive to maybe one. I think that could probably help you protect against the the battering if you succeed yeah. at that. Give us a roll. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, plus one. Yeah. Six. 
Okay. So you you fire, your your wards just don't activate in time, and maybe this thing slams you against the side of the tunnel and you fall. So you're prone, you're you're prone and you're battered one. Uh Verana, did you want to try to mitigate? Um so would I also be taking that? It's the same thing, yeah, because it raised up and it was going to swipe in like an arc through the two of you. I see, I see, I see. Um, I already used um, my bringer of retribution. Like you hit me, I'm going to try to. I think that would be useful on your next yeah, on your yeah, next action sense. as opposed to defending. Like if you wanted to tap into that, like if you take the spotlight after this, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I, I apologize. So what tags do I have? I'm sorry. Um, battered, one, and... Well, no, you get the roll to mitigate first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so if you don't have anything, that, <laughs> if you don't have any tags to give yourself a bonus, you can just roll flat with 2d6. I rolled five. Okay, so in this case, you are just like Clover. The two of you get knocked to the ground. Both of you are prone and battered. So just like your bruise as opposed to impaled. Okay. It's really not that bad. So so battered, one, and prone. Um uh, then we need to resolve the dan like whatever Clover did. Clover, how many on your initial roll? Do you remember how much power you generated? Um, is it just one? If it was a it's the amount of tags that you tapped into, you use two positive tags. Oh, I used on I used two positive tags. Okay. So the question then is, what do you want to put that towards? Um, do you want to buy effects tags? Do you want to do something else? Um, I would say because of the the way you described it, you probably gave it a disrupt tag because you've like mm. damaged its its tail. But I could just say like, you know, um, we could say you've or weaken. Maybe we say weaken. Yeah, you've you've like yeah. broken That's kinda, its tail. I'm trying to like disable it. Okay, make it less of a threat. So what I would say is maybe you give it. Um, you kind of give it weak in one, okay. and, then, and then with the rest of the bullet, you can actually just give it like shot one as well. Okay. Okay. So you basic. Okay. I'm good with that. All right. Cool. All right. So as this thing has now knocked the two of you prone, it like wheels around. It looks like it's ready to snap down at you. Meanwhile, back out inside the room itself, the one that has Ivan and is tearing through him. Uh, at this point, you can see that tail once more sweeps up and is looking like it's again wanting to kind of kind of swing back down through either Agaricus or Rika, not even Ivan specifically, just sort of flailing wildly. Uh, who wants to take the spotlight here? Who wants to go? I certainly can, but I'm going to be very destructive. Oh, you muted my tray. Uh, I was just going to use guns and more guns and two guns at once. Guns okay. and more guns and that two guns good. at once. Yeah. You, Absolutely. You go first. You, okay. Yeah. Such a good ability yeah. name. Yeah. Uh, so it'll just be the minus one from its scale. Uh, its scale hide. Okay. So you're firing at this thing as it's devouring... Ivan. You're, you're uh, not going to believe me. I really don't. <laughs> you could roll right here in Foundry and I can see it. But you choose not to so you can make up your roll. It's always funny how you never fail Two on an important sixes. roll. Never fail What'd on you an roll, important roll. Two sixes. Okay. So oh my uh, great box cards. Okay. How many tags did you tap into? Uh, two tags, uh, okay, and so, give me minus one, so I net it's just, at it, one. It's not your net. I just need to know how many tags oh, did you activate? How many power um, tags did you activate? My mistake, two. Okay, so you used two, so you're going to get two two power for that, but then because you crit, you get bonus. I'm trying to remember how much. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, you can... I think you get like an extra power. Yeah, you get an extra power. So you basically have three power that you can now invest into effects. So you could do uh, shot three. You could definitely do that like as a status tag. Um, 
or if there's something else you might have had in mind that you want to try to do with them. Basically, uh, as a status, it's one power per tier, but you can also do actual tags, which is a more permanent thing. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Uh, I, I, this this might be kind of weird, so feel free to say no. But <laughs> um, is there a way to um, increase the severity of tags that already exist? Specifically, uh, I'm thinking about Vrana yeah. stabbed tags, and I would love to potentially make the holes bigger than she that's a different in. target though uh oh you're shooting the one that's attacking chuck right. so the only ones that the, this one hasn't been damaged it has uh, garicus has done something else to it but he hasn't damaged it right uh my mistake um yeah i'll just do shot then uh, okay or bleed uh, i'm not sure what Okay, I'm just gonna put shot three. It, it, it really doesn't matter too much um, specifically what I use because it's all going to a specific limit that like shot and stabbed, all of that kind of goes to the same limit, which is Body essentially hurt it. or subdue. So that's essentially what's going towards. Like you're just trying to kill it. Um, okay, so you In unload. In all the ways. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna say that's gonna mitigate the like it raised its tail, you just unload in it. You see the like the the scales just rip up, blood kind of goes everywhere. I'm gonna say it releases Ivan for a moment too. You can see the pain from all the shots. So like the mouth comes off of the off the shoulder. So I say you're not so much pinned as you are laying there. You could probably easily stand up at this point as it <laughs> as it falls backwards. Um, there's still the one I would say that is now bearing down on clover and Vrana, and like they leap up and they're getting ready to pounce down on top of them who would like to take uh this now both of them have taken a, a decent amount of damage uh they both don't look particularly good <laughs> so it shouldn't you know they, they look like they could be ripped through Vrana can go again if that's okay go for it. in the back hallway do yeah. it and I would say definitely, since we mentioned it before, take your uh, take your Order retribution, retribution. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to do that, um, and I'll keep uh, going into uh, ancient fighting techniques. Um, and I'm still using my dagger, so that should be plus three. Okay, plus three, and again, just the hide or the scale, um, uh, so minus one. But I am battered. So does that? Does yeah, that? Do I would anything? say battered. Yeah, battered. Would it, I would. I would. I would put that here. Um, and I would say prone in this case because it's not pinning you specifically. Like I'm not going to apply prone, and I think you can just kind of stab at its legs. But I'll say battered. I'll apply here. Okay. So plus three minus one. Uh, yeah. So net of two. Okay. Uh, six plus three plus two, 11. 11. Okay. So that's success. No consequence. You stab away at it. Uh, you you three had positives. three power. Do you just want to put it towards stabbed? Yeah, I would very much like to. Describe how you kill this thing then. So this thing is enough. moving and she's on the ground. So she's doing that thing where like laying on the ground with a knife kind of facing up as this thing is like jumping and just like wreaking havoc on its like soft underside. Um, and so now she's just covered in like blood okay. of this thing. It's just dripping and like there's chunks of yeah. it dripping down too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that, that, is taken care of it is dead limp it is huge too it's like twice the size of a human right it's, it's massive and it just falls on top of like you and clover like you kind of have to like push it off <laughs> yeah. a little bit um, oh, all well. over my new shoes meanwhile <laughs> the one out in the entrance lifts its head up at this point and you can tell it's struggling <laughs> and it's like tongue is coming out as whatever agaricus was doing is definitely caused it some frustration then it's bleeding and you can see its neck begins to swell and it just goes ah, 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 ah. and it's like calling out and this like weird it almost sounds like half roar like like half like uh, like 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 howl it's it's, it's it's it doesn't make sense at all in terms of the sound but it's, it's starting to call out as if it could be trying to draw in reinforcements mm. who would like to go 
next. One of these things is dead. One of them is still alive. Important to finish and, it off here. An idea? Bring it, man. So okay. I think I'll carry over, like, he'll continue, like, using the floral of growth to keep the oleander smell, like, that pollen, that smell, continuing to emit. But yeah. then the gills on the other side of all the different mushrooms across his form start to kind of glow as a psychic blast begins to resonate and move forward. But it's not just that. We're not going to stop there because he will also call upon the honored warrior spirit of St. Patrick to drive <laughs> these snakes away. <laughs> <laughs> you see this man pop up. He's got a big stick. He's got big old mutton chops just sort of appears out of nowhere. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So are you trying? So this is like a psychic blast. Yeah. So it's like you've got the physical um... manifestation of the oleander, which is repulsive. The psychic blast to make it go away, plus the fear of St. Patrick coming at them. So it's what, three? Yeah, I had the hat trick, man. Yes, okay, I put up I, four fingers because I don't understand I think, how hat tricks work. I think the hide isn't, the scale's not going to come <laughs> into play, but it is furious. So I think the furious will come into play. So okay. uh, net of two, uh, net but of you're, two. you're, you're, you're okay, tapping into three. Yeah. Nice. Okay. okay. So three and a five get me to eight, and then two okay. gets me to ten. 10, no nice. consequence. Just so you could put your three power towards like psychically blowing its brains. Is that what you Yeah, pretty much. It just completely like obliterate this thing to where it's just scrambling. You see, it's starting to, to, to shout. And like, it's almost like that, that thing from Jurassic Park, you know, the one that killed uh, mm. like Wayne Knight, as it's starting to grow something out of the sides of its mouth. And it's like, and right as it does, its head begins to swell and just explodes from whatever it is that Agaricus did. And those of you that are near Agaricus, you see like, is it like a spirit that just pops up and just starts beating Snake with yeah, a club or like something? Yeah, it's like this weird, almost like, we've seen like AI overlay type mm -hmm. stuff. This is more like a weird spiritual overlay. But this get is a weird dude wearing Yeah, Snake, get out of here! Oh, goodness gracious! Oh, <laughs> Just beating it to that. Yeah. And, and we will... Go ahead and we'll end it there with you guys having defeated the guards at the front entrance. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of an alarm got nice. off, so people probably yeah. know that there's something going on. But at the very least, you've taken the two of these out. Those of you who had prone, you can go ahead and remove prone uh, okay. so that you're good there. But if you were impaled or something like that, that sticks uh, unless uh, unless you get like some sort of medical medical treatment. But prone and stuff like that, you can you can clearly remove. I think I mitigated all my damage. Okay, perfect. So we'll go ahead and we'll end it nice. there and we'll pick up in a couple <laughs> weeks. <laughs> you blew up the head of a snake and then Dude, the spirit Patrick. of St. Patrick beat its dead body. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is what you get. Yes. That's why I thought this would be a good game for us. <laughs> I thought this was <laughs> so this weird. Was an this is an alley. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's go ahead. Let's close it down so we can get on out of here. We're late. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chuck, we're going to start with you, man. I, I hear you got something going on. I do. Important? Yeah. Yeah. I got a, I got a game up on Kickstarter, uh, called skin city a week ago. I ran a one shot here showing it off. So yeah, go back skin city. It's fantastic. Uh, you play as skeletons wearing meat suits and there are references to magical girl transformation scenes in it. Check it out. Skin city. Fantastic. And while you're talking, you want to say what's going on with uh, DOK oh, this week? I guess I do have another channel. Yeah, I uh, Defenders of Cobalt Wednesday, hopefully, we'll be returning to our Night Below campaign using Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, Friday, hopefully, we'll be returning to our Pathfinder 2nd Edition campaign. Um, I've We don't have a title for that campaign. I thought of one, then I realized I didn't like it. Uh, but Joe plays a plant that is too precious and pure for mm -hmm. any world in all of existence. <laughs> Fantastic. That's adorable. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, my Trey, where can we find you on the internet? I am my place games on YouTube where I make system agnostic or uh, multi-system uh, tabletop content that centers the GM and player experience and uh i'm gonna get jeff to do this from now on because he's so much better at it than i am <laughs> what am i doing 
I have more work I got to do. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Whatever Dickies. it is, you got to do it. Apparently. <laughs> this is why it's not good. It's, it's never pays to be good at anything. Always be average because then no one wants you to do it, but also no one's going to complain too much either. Just, just, just right down the middle. That's where you want to be in life. It's perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, links are in the chat. Links are in the show notes and stuff like that. So you can find links to everyone's wonderful stuff uh, and you should go follow and support all of them wherever they are at. Uh, as for us right here, uh, our next game is tomorrow night. Steven's going to be hopping back into the GM seat as we get back to Star Trek Adventures, uh, continuing our first duty campaign. Uh, then uh, on Thursday, we've got more Arzium. Uh, we might have a full crew. We'll see. Uh, as we got some Arzium as we're coming down to the end of that. Uh, Friday, Delta Green. Uh, we can see what the hell happened as they all... Uh, sort of kind of escaped a weird dimensional plane where um, a woman tried to beat them with an intestine whip. I don't know. It's basically what it was. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. So we'll see what Mm -hmm. happens. Uh, And then Saturday, uh, Saturday we got Call of Cthulhu where Long's character has to go into a death fight, uh, a death fight ring. Uh, While no one really knows where Ashley's character is. Ashley's, who knows? We don't know. Uh, It's fantastic. Uh, and next Monday, I think we're going to try to start about gun next week. If I get the work done on it this week, uh, that's the plan. Uh, so, uh, come back for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and raid somebody. We're going to raid talking XP. So, uh, so follow the raid. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye.